Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to cover a data model in this. I did receive multiple questions from my mentees or some professionals. They are already working on Salesforce and obviously they would like to know why do we have to learn about the data model and what is the importance. I will create in two to three videos uh, completely where we cover uh, the data model and we cover the, the object structure. We talk about um, database tables. We talk about a bit of database. We will also cover the schema builder in, in Salesforce and that will cover in, in two different videos. So um, start with uh, my, my channel, it's Camps Tech Talk and make sure you follow all my social media and any questions or you would like to learn something different or new things, please post me anything. I will try my best to cover um, in my next video. OK, um, so let's start with the definition of data model. It it will help for the people who are learning or they have learned Salesforce. They've forgotten about data model. And maybe this is a first of your first project where you're going to use the data model and you forgot about it. OK, so it's data model is like drawing a map for your data. It helps you see how different pieces of information connect and fit together in your system so you can understand and use your data in a better position. Guys, tip, you're learning about AI and data is very important and data model is playing a big part at the same time. So data model will help you to create data and they both should know each other what's happening. OK, so let's talk about it's like a visual for a business, how it looks like. OK, uh, I'm straight jumping on a Salesforce um, uh, where we can we can show you what are the trails, what modules available and how the data model works. So I have simply searched a data modeling chapter, which I will put this link in the description. So when you're learning, your trailheads or learning your modules via your trainer or teacher want to revise your data modeling chapter comes down come down to my video you can cover it all in one place okay so there are three modules so first module will cover the overview um the, the structure about um the data model and second is the relationship of objects and i will tell you why we call it table and then the third one will be the uh, schema builder. So I will cover maybe in the next video both of them, object relationship and the schema builder in one go. But let's take a very simple example. I have opened this Excel sheet, OK? And in this Excel sheet where you can see, you can actually open multiple sheets, sheet one and sheet two. So think about a structure. You have an Excel file which has a name called book. And under Excel sheet, you have sheet one and sheet two. And in the sheet one and sheet two, you will have columns. Uh, I would call column name like a first name. Uh, I'm just typing it and then I would say last name. OK, and third one we will call a phone number. OK, I'm, I'm creating creating different columns in Excel shot Excel. But in Salesforce. Your book is actually a database which in Salesforce you can't see the database because it's behind the scene. But if you're using SQL Server or using Oracle database, whenever you create a database, you have to mention the name of the database. Then under the database, you create different tables so like sheet one. Sheet one, this might be my account and sheet two is is maybe my my contact. Right. End of the day, contact is a is an object in Salesforce. OK. And and the account is another object, but behind the scene in a database, account is a is a table, and contact is also a table. And under the table, we have three different fields. One is first name, second is last name, third is a phone number. Okay, so what I did, I created two tables in Excel sheet. One is called account, second is called contact. But in my Excel sheet, you can see sheet one and contact. I can rename it, but obviously I'm giving you an example. OK. In Salesforce, um, as my focus is actually always on Salesforce, the reason is you always get. Updated 
and the latest information from these chapters. So learning objectives about data model is the what we are going to learn, the parts using object on Salesforce CRM platform, difference between standard and custom object. So which means when we say standard objects, it means standard tables and custom objects are custom tables. So which means let's take an example of Salesforce. As soon as you launch a developer box, which I've covered in the previous videos, I will put the link as well for your reference, how to create a developer account or developer environment. You can easily do it. So out of the box, which means as soon as you open your Salesforce, you do see account, you do see content, which let me show you a little bit flavor here. So for example, this is my Salesforce. I logged into developer environment and I can see account and I can see contact. So when I click on account, I can see uh, account name, account site, phone number and alias, right? Under the under the account name, when I click on this account and I can see the detail page where I have many fields. So these fields are actually in Excel as it follows. So, so basically account name, phone number, account number. So if I come back and go to my sheet one and I can put here the column A, account name, column B, account site, column C, phone number, column D, web. So, so this is how the Excel and database, they kind of related, they're not same thing because every, every product has a limitation, they work differently. And same as in Salesforce, we are we, we're using different names, just different um, concept of creating our structure, okay? So now talk about it, overview of objects. This is exactly they're showing in this example. We're talking about Dreamhouse is a reality company that provides a way customers to shop for homes and contact real estate agents. Everybody knows about the real station, uh, real estate agents, which is around your houses, wherever you live, you will see one real estate agent around on the street or somewhere in the corner, somewhere, okay? So take that example, they have new home to sell and they have multiple leads comes in, multiple contacts, I contacted them, but maybe for one house, 15 people or 20 people contacted, where do you keep the data? Maintain on Excel sheet or maintain on Salesforce or maintain on somewhere else in a different CRM or in a database, somewhere you need it. But in Salesforce, we have objects. You have custom objects, you have standard objects. So here, what they are showing is property name, price, bedroom, bathroom, so. So this is not out of box because I know my Salesforce because I have seen I'm learning. I learned for 10 years. You guys are learning. You might not find property name there, but it might be your project when you're learning in Salesforce. OK, now when it comes to selling houses, a lot of more things want to track. As I mentioned before, then Salesforce admins, they have to create these fields, objects and things in the Salesforce. So now let's start with data model. So data model is more or less what it sounds like. Data model. It's a way to model what database tables look like, which I mentioned. Look, this is actually the paragraph number four is exactly covering which I mentioned before and I was comparing with your Excel as well as the Salesforce object and the table behind the scene. OK, but now in this, my database name, I don't know because it's behind the Salesforce. It might be my org is my database. So that's my unique number, which you can see as a, as a company. The more you learn that the, the each org has IDs, that might be my database behind the scene, but I don't know. Salesforce knows that because I'm just a tenant on this particular Salesforce org, which is ORG, and that has multiple tables already created. And right now on my screen, you can see home, leads, account, contact, opportunity, campaign, task, calendar. So these are all tables and they are all related to each other as well, right? So come back to the same thing. Now, this is my column again under the property. So when I talk about property, so in Salesforce CRM, we think about database tables as object. We think about column as fields, row as records. So instead of account spreadsheet or table, we have an account object. Very simple. So this is become a data model, right? Now, I was also talking about how to search about data models. How can I read about data models? 
is every object has a data model. So in a very generic, I was looking at some diagrams basically on, on Googling it about Salesforce. So guys, you simply say Salesforce data model. The first article you can see here, the entity relationship diagram for standard Salesforce objects in this section illustrate important relationship between object, ERD use cross foot notation and following ERDs available. So these are your all out of box ERDs available. So let's let's say if I want to see process object. OK, um, so this is how it's going to look like uh, when developers or technical architects or architects when they create some relationships where you learn about um, the one to many, many to many, which we will talk in our next video about these things and how they connect. So they, this is basically a connected, uh, the connection between different objects right behind the scene. Um, this is what they're showing. So now if I click on standard objects and I'm just going a little bit fast because uh, you will easily get bored otherwise um, <laughs> that too much information in one go. Now let's talk about standard object account. I'm just going to click account here. And these are all account fields, but where it comes from, it's at the top level. When I go back where you can see all the all the entities um, are are connected. Um, so target object ID, we have process instant work item. So technically these are our examples. I'm trying to find if I can get some easy example for you. Uh, user permission, email object, task events. Let's see if this is easy one. So task and events, uh, maybe this is easy and the service cloud support. So I'm going to check both of them. Let's see which one is simple while you're learning. Yeah, there we go. So let's have a look. How does it look like? Ah, nice. So how does it all connected? See the task activity part is how they all connected. You can see the whole diagram about this. The contact lead user and you can it's like an eagle view for you where everything sits under the under the sales or oh, sorry uh, the task and events and how they all connected to each other so end of the day even when you when you join a company or you are about to join a company or you are already talking to a company and you just mid of the project you picked up something else guys i would say always look for data model how many objects involved and how many IDs were involved? What is the relation between these objects? So if this is a task and events, you can clearly see that task and events are related to campaign, case, asset, contract, opportunity, product, solution, and order. It's all related and account, multiple things. So it's, it's kind of a full view, guys, they are really using task and events. So, so this is the main thing and obviously end of this chapter what you guys are looking at right now on my screen you can also do the test about the the data model how much how much you learned and obviously pass your exam it this particular model will help you how to create objects um the custom objects custom fields um if you struggle obviously post a question to me and related to this if you really want to see another video please do let me know well, I would say this is the best place to start and kick off with the data model, which is a structure of objects and fields and and IDs, the records basically, right? And it's giving a visual to a company wherever you're going to learn or you're going to implement something. So it will give a visual to others as well. How many things we need in this project to maintain the data? And we talk about real estate. They need account. They need lead. They need contact. They need property home. They need to manage the housing information. So, so these are just overview. So that's what they need. And this is what I need to create a structure for from this data. And then you can replicate that and you will learn and create your own data model. All right. Hope you like it. And definitely I will come to the next video about the object. Um, and custom object and standard object and the relationship plus the schema builder. So schema builder will tell how it helps to create your own data model. We will talk about it in the next video. Thank you guys. Have a good day. Bye bye.